Hey everyone, good afternoon. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, my name is Brian Adams. I'll be taking you through a, a couple of the latest and greatest here. Uh, really, really thrilled to have the opportunity to show off some of the new features our team has rolled out over even the past 24 hours. So if you're one of our clients, your account might look different today than it did yesterday. And uh, if you've been evaluating white charts, the same thing. So I'm gonna take you through here. Uh, goal of this is to show some of the ways that our clients are using this tool to streamline investment research. Um, one of the latest releases is our stock quote pages. I'll be focusing there a good bit. And then tying in actually a couple of the questions we received uh, a few times after our last webinar, and that, those are both in regards to our portfolio tools. So a little bit of the agenda, and I'll kind of cover that here also in a second. Uh, but just so you know who you're talking to, my name is Brian Adams. I'm an account executive here at YCharts, just meaning that I lead a lot of the product demonstrations like we're doing today, uh, work with folks who are evaluating our platform, work with those uh, after they adopt the platform to make sure that uh, you know everything that I say is holding true in terms of how you're getting value out of the tool. So really, really excited to get into it. I'm not going to waste too much time here. We're going to jump right in. But just to cover it again, a uh, couple of the, the research tools we'll go through. We have some new features in our comp tables. Uh, the screener I'll get into a little bit and then bring in together our economic data, as well as some of the overall market data and uh, getting right into the, the company pages. So I'm gonna go for shooting for about 30 minutes or so, and then uh, hopefully take your questions. So feel free, use the chat. I can see that. So let me know as you have questions and I'll address those probably at the end. Um, you know, Starting off with the two, actually, as I hop into the platform, two of the questions that I'll go give you some examples of are on our portfolio tools, do they give you the ability to show changes or are they static? Yes, they give you the ability to show changes. Love to talk about that. Number two, and this is a new one, can we organize those pages a little bit differently? So I'll talk to that too. Now, had a little bit of fun with this example. Um, you know, I was reading from uh, a trustworthy source the other day about the puppy boom during COVID. So I'm using my uh, Pet Med Express here to walk through the company pages. Um, so we're going to talk about housing. We're going to talk about different periods of uh, rising interest rates as we tie in the economic scenarios. But let me highlight for you what I'm really most excited about. And I'm going to take you back to yesterday with our old stock quote pages. As you can see, a little bit different style. So again, something that our team has just rolled out. Uh, if you've been using these stock quote pages, lots of great information here. So you'll be able to see this uh, just in a new style. And it is uh, really, really supplemented with some good new views on what you can look at. Let me go ahead and I'll flip that back on. And so we'll see, here is our new quote page. Um, again, if you're familiar with Y charts, a lot of the similar information, a couple of things that I'll point out as we come down just on the quote page itself is going to be on the right hand side. You'll see that. And I'm sure you've heard about it in the news. A lot of these names that, uh, have high short interest and how that has been contributing some pretty wild swings in individual companies. Uh, and, you know, over recent time frames. So we have brought that to the forefront. You can see short interest here to the right of your pages. Another reason why I selected this name because it gives us a good example of one that has decent bit of movement there. Other things that uh, you, you'll notice here on the events, these have been broken out a little bit. So you can look at earnings and dividends on separate tabs just makes it easier to, you know, rather than having those cobbled together as you're going through those events, um, you know, be able to, to segment them a little bit. And then underneath, you're going to see pretty clean and clear information on earnings estimates, reported numbers, beats and misses, as well as the dividend information. So we brought that to the forefront. And then also to the right-hand side of your page, the analyst coverage that we're used to, a couple of nice updates there, your price targets as we're fielding those updates, you'll see 
the low end of that range and the high end of that range, um, as well as, of course, the consensus buy, holds, and sells with recommendations. You do get now a little bit of the, the standard deviation there as well. Um, so nice update on, on that information that's part of what we had been showing previously as well. Real quick, I'm going to take a question from Malik as we go. Can you create a watch list of multiple stocks you're monitoring? Yes, you absolutely can. Let's jump into that real fast and I'll come back to this page. But our dashboard, this is actually your home page. So this is somewhere that I typically start. Um, and it is somewhere where I, I definitely recommend you do just that. Build out the names that you want to keep an eye on. So you'll see the ability to create a new watch list here. And you simply type in those names and add them into your view. Now, what that ends up looking like when you come down into a list that you've built out, you will see that you can track price change throughout the day. And you can also come in and look at underlying metrics. So lots of good information you can pull through here just from a tracking and monitoring perspective. And then you can click right into the symbol. It's going to take you back to the quote page. Little teaser here. You might notice that this is in a style uh, in terms of this dashboard page that our old stock quote was in. And that is something that we're updating as well. Uh, back into my quote page, wanted to highlight a couple more things at the bottom of the page. Number one, top fund holders. You can see who in terms of uh, managed funds, mutual funds, ETFs, who's actually holding that name. This is something new. These are my own portfolios that I've created in the portfolio tool. So I can actually see that for three of my portfolios, I hold uh, PetMed Express, and these are the weights that I currently hold them at. Um, so that's a really nice one to tie into what I'll show you on the portfolio side of things. As we come up back to the top of this page, I wanted to show a tried and true. Now, not a ton has changed here in our key stats, but for those of you who have not seen a ton of Y charts before, this is a really, really great area as you do some comparisons. One of the things that people often ask is, I'm looking at one name, what's the next best in that space, right? So here we go. We've got the ability to come in and show a set of comparables. And as you look through these, if there is another name that you'd like to drop in there, I plucked one off uh, earlier as I was taking a look at these companies. Maybe this will give you an idea even for your own research. You can make that swap, update your list, and it's going to drop right into this table. So now I can compare these numbers uh, you know, right off of the financials on down into some of the valuation metrics and other performance and risk metrics across a set of comps. So really nice way to do those comparisons and do them very quickly. You know, that's a, a thing that I really like to focus on. I mean, at the end of the day, my goal is to get things in your hands that are useful, get them and get you to them very quickly. So the ease of use of this platform, hopefully we'll show through today as we continue to go through it. All right. Financials. This is uh, a pretty updated page. So you will see now, and actually, you know what? Let's even go back in time one more, one more time here. I'm going to turn off the new page so you can see what this looked like before. Again, a little bit older style. And then obviously you have access to the information, but let's talk about what is new here. So one thing that you note right off the bat these periods are forward looking. So you have 2022, 23, 24 in terms of the estimates data in your financials. So you have the ability to see that. You can toggle that off and on. So if you want to have a few additional periods as you look back through the history here, you can do that as well. We now have the ability to flip the order of dates that you're looking at. So if I want to go back and start from an earlier point in time, you can just flip that chronological order on, toggle it off. And then I also have the ability to roll these up or show the details. So we can go in, break out the lines that are rolling into that gross profit number, for example, or we can just look at the summary number and that'll all be consolidated for you. So a couple of nice ways to work through the financials. 
One other thing, this is just a workflow tip. I love this one. So up at the top, you have a switch to button. You kind of saw the clicks that I did to get here, financials, you know, maybe I changed the format from annual to a growth format, whatever it might be. If you use that switch to feature to a different company, it's going to keep you within that same page. So it makes it really nice to, you know, save a few clicks and do those comparisons with, uh, you know, not a lot of friction to get there. All right, something else you might notice. Before, we had a couple of links that are really helpful for you up at the top. You got alerts, notes, and quick flows. The quick flows menu, if you're familiar with this on your portfolio pages and some of the other new pages in the tool, sits as a little tab on the right-hand side of the page. So now that becomes available to you on the stock quote page to leverage without having to go through the link your alerts, same function, but it's this little bell right up top. So you have the ability to go ahead and set alerts and you can do it from broad base if you want to alert yourself new events or financials coming out. Or we can do something like grab a uh, daily metric and or any metric, as you can see when I type search that and go ahead and set a very specific alert to let me know that, you know, Maybe I'm looking for an intraday price change, something for example. All right, so nice ways to keep yourself abreast of what's going on. Um, again, that's gonna trigger an alert right to you. So you can just uh, very passively actually stay on top of things. Under actions, this is one way that I might collaborate with my fellow colleagues or just keep myself on top of what I might be looking to buy. And so when you save that down, you get a timestamp and here's your little sharing ability. This also exists in other features where you can come in. If you're with a team, we can set it up to share across your team. Everybody knows that it's something that you're looking at. All right, let's go into those quick flows. Um, actually, you know what? One tab I wanted to highlight before I do that, your estimates tab. So I saw a question about data sources. We pull a lot of information from Morningstar. We pull estimates data from S&P. Our team goes out and sources a lot of information on the economic side of things from agencies that report that data. Um, I'll cover that here in just a bit, but estimates gives you further detail into those future periods. So when you're looking at trends, again, your analyst coverage here, here you are broken out with those earnings estimates versus actual numbers. We can go into some of the other key fundamentals here. So a nice consolidated view to break that down and look at how those have trended over time in terms of revisions, if uh, those have been happening. Okay, quick flows. So right in line with uh, what we're kind of talking off, off, off the top, uh, you know, how can we shortcut you? How can we use templated material? to make it faster to get you to where you're trying to go. This is one where on the original stock page, you only had this single quick flow. Now you can see there's a lot of really interesting options here. If we're looking for more comparable companies, if we're looking to get us insight onto what the dividend payouts are, but this is gonna open up the ability to use our comparison. You see that I've already been playing around with this a little bit, typing in my tickers. That's all you do is type search a ticker there and then you have the ability to use any of these links dynamically. One that I'm gonna jump into, since we're talking financials, is prof profitability analysis. This is taking us into our comp table, stands for comparison table. What that quick flow does is brings in a few of those metrics for you, so that now I have a list of names that I'm comparing and doing that very easily. And these are customizable to what you wanna see, so you can go in, browse those metrics, you can search them and you can drop them into your table. All right, so here, this is another focal point of our day today. The comp tables we've made some really, really nice additions to. I'm gonna reset this and go back to scratch. Now you can always come into the tools dropdown, find your comp table here out of this list and then work from here. If you are building out watch lists, like we talked about on that dashboard, you have the ability to pull those right into your comp table. 
as well as other areas of the tool. So under my list and my watch list, you're going to see that any watch list I've built out comes through into this view. I'm going to use my sector watch list because I have a, an example there that I want to get into related to some events that we've seen in that sector. Now, that is exactly one of the reasons for a new addition here. So what you have traditionally been able to do, if I open up my metric sets from a performance standpoint, although you see a lot of different ways in my metric sets to analyze these names, but I'm going to use trailing total returns. And you'll see that this builds out some fixed periods so I can track performance data, but I'm tracking it over those fixed periods of time. And the question might be, hey, I'm seeing an event take place in the market. I'm seeing something that I'd like to dig into further over specific periods of time. How might I be able to do that? Well, we're going to give you this custom period now. So look for that right in the middle of your screen in your comp table. And you're now going to have the ability to come in and identify whatever you want. So if we looked at the tech bubble and maybe you know we can go back and look on a chart when that actually took place, but we'll say you know going back to 2000s, whatever the date that you might select, and maybe I'll just type it in. Uh, let's do 2000 to say 2003. And you guys can get the date nailed down once you're in here working with this. Returns, you have the ability to take the pure price return or the total return. I'm just gonna take the total return. We can annualize or not, depending on how big your custom time frame is. Drop that column into your table. And now you can see how those have performed over that period of time. If we drop our metric down, you'll also see that custom time period gives you the date ranges that you entered in there. So you can see rather than just the header, what the actual period was. Now I've done a little work here to, to prepare a couple of uh, macro events that I thought would be interesting. If we reset this, anything that you do in your comp tables, you can save that full table down. And so when I come to my save tables, I'm going to see a few that I really wanted to get into. One being our important market events. And you'll see now I've got timeframes nailed for financial crisis, interest rate spike, oil price collapse, and COVID sell-off and recovery. And I would go through the same exercise of just bringing in names to track off of that. So a few things that I point to here, because I want to focus on one of these. I want to focus on uh, that financial crisis. Let's take that top one, for example. So... If I'm looking at the sectors, I can now see that financials during that period were the biggest drawdowns. I can look at how that recovery stood out. Um, and then hopefully this comes into play as you're thinking about strategies, scenarios for your portfolios. Uh, to take it one step deeper, um, well, first, before we do that, maybe let's benchmark it, but then we'll take it a step deeper and say, we wanna really get into the financials and see what's underneath that sector. So I'm going to actually take uh, the holdings of that sector ETF and drop it into my table. I'll give you a quick example of how you can find these holdings if we're on an ETF page. So I'm going to go into XLF for the financial sector. And you'll see that you have a holdings tab here. Okay, so if we click into that holdings tab. Now you're gonna see a couple of things. You've got the top 25 with the current weights, price change again, intraday. You can save that as a watch list. So I've already saved it, I'm not gonna click it. But what that means is that when we come back into our list here and my list, I'm gonna have those holdings saved down that I can drop into this table. So now we're really drilling down into that period of time where we know there was a decline Sorry, I need to add that instead of intersect it. So I'm going back in just to make that flip and then you'll see it drop right into the table. All right, so nice easy way to now see how all of those names have performed over the different timeframes that I've customized, although I'm really looking at that first one for the financial crisis. And then you can continue to modify that list if you want other metrics beyond performance to uh, have an addition to that table. All right, so 
From here, something else that we've just released, you'll notice that we've always had the ability to export this data a couple of different ways if you wanna take it out into Excel to work with it. However, we now have the download PDF option. So really nice way from a presentation standpoint, if you get to a set of data that you really like, you can come right in here and open up a PDF and you'll be able to see those columns that we just added in now coming down these pages in a nice clean format, something that you can take into your meetings, whether it's with your investment committee. You know, if you have some things that you might even share with a client or prospect, then certainly another way to put some data behind the, the investment thesis that you're presenting to them. All right, so you'll see behind this, we have standardized performance data. So you will have uh, the information that you've selected to bring in as well as that performance information beneath it. This also can be branded, although my image file for my logo was a little bit small, but that'll be a piece that we can drop your branding in. And keep in mind, we can do that with a lot of the portfolio information as well. Speaking of portfolios, good hit on what we got going in comp tables. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, the portfolio. So again, question that I fielded a lot has been, can we add changes to our portfolio? If you think about it from a strategic perspective, I think it's very, very, very important that you can do that. And so I'm happy to say that that is available. Now, before I talk about that, again, for my clients, this is something that I'm really excited to show off here. This is a little bit of a different look from our portfolio list page. So you'll actually see that you have a filter now on the left-hand side. If you're building out portfolios for your, your clients, if you're building out different strategies, you know, a lot of times I was just sorting off of name and I'd have these organized by, you know, when I last modified them, for example. Now I can go in and say, okay, I have a lot of different allocation style portfolios. Let me just put those into an easy view because I have, you know, several portfolios built out especially if I have a client that I'm bringing in multiple portfolios. Now I can see here's my traditional IRA Roth individual and then just roll it up all into one. So that's uh, a nice navigation that we now have the ability to do. Um, so be aware of that in terms of how you're naming those portfolios and can jump your, your way around. Although at the end of the day, search can drive everything too. You can come up to the top and find your portfolios as well. Okay, so sticking with the uh, financial crisis and some of the things I might do to analyze actual uh, securities that are going into a portfolio or I'm considering, um, perhaps I'm even considering how that might impact going forward, uh, what, it, what it may look like. I have built out a sector neutral equity example, which as I touch my holdings tab, you will note that these holdings are in that more static fashion. Now I'm going to flip, I use that switch to again, to just stay on the same page and flip to what I've created as a dynamic portfolio and one that I've made some changes to, to reflect uh, some anticipation during that financial crisis period that you know those financials would have a, a tough time. And so I've made some moves around that. Let me jump into a few questions really quick. Mark, I'm sorry, I'm moving way too fast for you. I'm going to slow down a little bit. I know uh, I've got a lot to cover here, so trying to fit it in. How we access the important market events timeframes. Michael, thank you for the question. Um, that is a very good question. I'm going to go into my other tab here. And that was within our comp tables. I actually had the benefit of one of my colleagues building this for me. So you have the ability to open your save templates, but this is simply one that I've saved down. Now, from a support standpoint, we can help build these out for you. So again, this is one, if I click into it, I have those periods saved. If we go into the custom period, again, that's how I built it in the first place. So I just selected those time periods and named it. But yeah, work with us. If you you know look at this stuff and these periods look interesting, that's certainly something that our support team would love to help out with. So 
reach out to your CSM. Um, you know, going back to the, the speed of the, the demonstration today, I forgot to mention this is a recorded demonstration. We'll get it out to you uh, for all attendees. So we will uh, have it available to you and, and you can go back through and search, you know, some of the specific things I'm covering. Can you import portfolios? Jeffrey, good question. So back onto the sectoral neutral or sector neutral portfolio. Let me just quickly walk through how I actually created this portfolio because it's pretty simple, really. Now, right now, I am doing it through an Excel import. So as I go to create my blank dynamic model portfolio, I go into upload data and I'm gonna, I have it open still. I'm gonna show you, this is the actual file that I have used to import my positions here. So what you're seeing is positions with weights and how those positions have changed. So I've simply copied those positions and included a list of them going back or actually in this case going forward. And so when I add that deal or, or add that file into my portfolio tool, you're going to see it accepts it as long as you're in the right format, submit, and it builds that table for you. So you have uh, just a, a step to get it into that Excel format. You actually have the ability to take, if you've been using our portfolio tool and have not tested out the dynamic functionality, you have the ability to take the holdings of your static portfolio, export that into the exact format that I was just showing you, and then load it up with your changes so that all of a sudden you now have this dynamic functionality with changes being shown. All right. So stepping back into my portfolio quote page again, you know, kind of the purpose of this exercise uh, when it comes to running a dynamic portfolio, again, recall that I'm making some changes off of the thesis that um, during that period of financial drawdown, I moved away from some of the banking companies. So what I ultimately want to do is go ahead and run a comparison to see how this model compares to the one without those changes being made. I'm going to jump into my performance tab here. And you'll see that within my edit comparables, I have my sector neutral equity loaded up there. I can compare that to anything that I've already built out. So as you type search, you're going to see I have an equity income model. Maybe I compare against that. But for this head to head, I'm going to leave it with my sector neutral equity model. And now you can see both of those portfolios and how we performed on different periods of time. So trailing periods, as well as those annual periods. And then underneath, just from kind of a you know, risk reward standpoint, we have up down capture on the portfolio. So you can look at that as well. You know, you see those one, three, five, 10, 15 year periods. Um, so lots of good information that you're capturing on the portfolios. So something else that, uh, you know, as we're thinking about custom timeframes that you're able to do here, if you're within our fundamental chart, you can actually take that custom time frame at the top right of your chart. So this is something that I kind of did to really narrow down the time frames of those macro driving events. Um, but you'll see it here. If we go from you know, period of 2020 to period of 2005, for example, catching just before that drawdown, that's where I start to see the difference between, and I'll pull on my other portfolio for you as we go back into, let's say 2015 as kind of a recovery period. So making that change, I know I'm beating the s and I'm not so worried about that. Let's beat our sector neutral equity portfolio. And so I can now see as a result of those changes that I've made, what the performance was 
and the spread between that sector neutral equity portfolio and my dynamic portfolio with the changes being made, being in that purple line. Uh, Jared, let me take that one for the dynamic portfolio tool. Are there plans to be able to build out the portfolio changes inside of the tool instead of uploading it? So that is a good question. I think it is on the roadmap to be able to do that. Uh, right now, you have the ability to go in and simply export the file right off of the, the portfolio page and then reload it up with the changes that you're being you're, that you're making. So if I go to edit this portfolio, you'll see that you can download the source file that's right here on this page. You don't necessarily need to save that Excel file. So you can just take that and then re-upload it. All right. Now, one thing I'll actually, this is funny. I'll point this out because this is a little, uh, a little trick that we've also added as you're editing your portfolios or going in to view it in the editor, rather than having to click back, you have this button here that says overview. You can use that to take you right back to the quote page. And so that's a nice way to, from a navigation standpoint, to work your way around the system. All right, I know I'm at the 30 minute mark. I'm gonna keep rolling uh, as I've been taking a few questions along the way here. So let me again, kind of point to a few other ways that we're tying this thing together. That quick flows menu that we looked at on the individual company page, you're gonna see the economic impact scenarios here. So I kind of mirrored that with some of those that I was showing in the comp table itself. Um, but these are designed to give you the visual complement where if I take that financial crisis analysis, I'm now looking at a chart that's fully annotated during that time period. So you'll see without having to go into those date ranges, I'm looking at October 1507 to March 2009. And I'm actually in a growth of $10,000 format. So you know, you actually get to see the brunt of that drawdown based on this chart format. And this is something I'm in a presentation view, which you have the ability to take these charts right off the platform very easily. Um, but if we take that off, now you can, you know, look at the different time frames and work with it, make some annotations to this. I've got my custom color scheme on there, which we can do for you too. We can flip that on and off as well. Okay, so a couple of other things that uh, I would point to, I'm going to go back into the comp table because some of you have become familiar with a few of our latest uh, or last feature releases on the templates. Um, again, something that we're continuing to add. We've done that in comp tables. So before where I was opening from my saved comp tables, we do have templates. So back to the question of, are some of those available in your account right now? The templates are gonna be those that are available to all of our clients. So you can come into templates, look through some of these, and if any catch your eye, then you have the ability to jump right into one. As you hit start, it's gonna build that table out for you with the metrics. This one specifically, bringing in all S&P 500 companies with several fundamental metrics. So you can look at price earnings ratio, price to sale for the individual companies. And again, something that you can print out that's export, download PDF. Okay. So from here, actually something, you know, as we're talking about broad market and economic scenarios that might impact your decision-making. I think one thing that during my conversations I've learned, uh, we have a really, really nice report on the S&P that provides fundamentals that I found a lot of folks aren't aware that it even exists. So if you haven't seen this, check out our S&P 500 fundamental report. As I type in S&P 500, I'm looking for the PE ratio because Within this table, I now want to see how the overall index has been in or uh, impacted or trending off of that. 
And so we actually here get to see the price earnings ratio historically, and we can go back to other periods. So if we want to go back to 2006, 2007, you start to see that increase here, right here in the values. And then if we go back to the most recent, seeing some ticks up during the most recent period. So definitely something that folks are keeping an eye on um, and just really nice, clean way to see that information. If you want to go into some of those other indicators, we're going to give you the report that it's coming off of, as well as the source. Like I mentioned, Y charts are going out. We're going out to the agencies like Standards and Poor's and pulling this information in for you. So when we click into that report, you're going to get all of the related indicators here that you can see, you know, beyond just price earnings ratio, how's the dividend yield on the S&P trended over time? So some really interesting trends that we can capture here using this information. And then ultimately, you can take this into your full fundamental chart and work with that, uh, you know, to get into some more detail or run some overlays on it. If we want to put the actual index to uh, draw a comparison, we have that available and you can simply layer that on top, see how things are performing. There you go. Okay. I'm going to pause for another question here. Can I update established models and benchmarks without having to re-import using the import? Good question, Edward. Thank you for that one. Um, so if you are going to the model portfolio tool and you want to make a change, you'll see the pencils here on the right-hand side when you make that edit. If you wanna change your benchmark, it's right here on the left-hand side. So you can search for another index benchmark or you can search for a benchmark that you've created. So blended benchmark there. All right. Um, that is something that you have the ability to create. So any indices that you wanna to use to create your own blend uh, you can do it right there. And then again, you can pull the source file right off of the, the system here when you make your edits, make that change, and you've got it loaded back up. Okay. A um, couple other charts that I want to show you, and then I will be bumping up against my time here. But I want to get into one of the templates here in the charts. So just to make sure that you're aware of this. Charts have the templates available as well. If you click on this new fundamental chart drop down, you're going to see new from templates. So similar to that comp table, it's going to open up a series of templates that you have access to in your account right now. And the one that I uh, was looking at most recently, you know, we're looking at the financial crisis period. Obviously, there's a housing component to that, a big component to that and seeing some trends in the housing market right now. So I thought, you know, one of the charts that we put in here is a chart of 2020, quite interesting and continues to be, was the mortgage rates and how mortgage originations and refinances, refinancings look against that. So again, when you, you know, drop that template into the system, you're going to see those two indicators dropped into your chart. It's in the presentation format. If you want to pull it out, you just click that off. You can toggle it. And so really, really clear trend is we've seen that mortgage rate drop. That's late 2018 to present. Big, big uptick in activity in mortgage originations, uh, refinancing specifically. So if your friends are refinancing and putting their money in the stock market, you kind of have an idea what's going on there. Okay, so covered a couple of things here. We covered the latest and greatest in the stock quote pages, which again, I'm really excited about that. We've got comp tables for you that you can now print off of. You can run custom time periods. You can run the templates in your comp tables. You can run your templates here in the charts. 
And so lots of ability to do those things and do them quickly. That's the whole idea here. Same thing as we went through those quick flows. So I'm going to take a pause here. I'm going to review a couple of these questions and hopefully give you some answers. And then we'll be wrapping up pretty quickly. Okay, so one question, Corey, uh, about pulling annual data for returns, um, but looking to do it on a monthly basis, or uh, perhaps the question might be related to running it on a rolling basis. Love that. Um, something that we can do through our time series tool. I'm going to take you in through our quick flows, which we'll get there as well. If we go into our comparison, I'm going to take out my stocks here and just add in a couple of my portfolios. So I'm running sample portfolios that I've built out in my account. And this is right into our quick flow comparison. You're gonna find this one at the bottom of your table. So time series table here, you got annual or quarterly, and we can certainly update that metric. If you click into that, a tool that looks very similar to our comp table, right? This is our time series table. Difference now being that I'm taking that three month total return or quarterly return and running it over different periods of time. And you'll see again that you have the date range to choose what period of time you're running that to specifically. Okay. Now you could change that to an annual monthly metric. Uh, and since we've been talking about fundamentals, I'll note that if you're running it against uh, individual securities, you just come right back into this metric box and you can update a fundamental. So where we were looking at price earnings ratios at a point in time, you could actually take those back and run a rolling history of how that metric has been changed. All right, Thomas, question on customized colors available on the website or just the reports? Great question. So we've done a lot of work in terms of how we can get this in your hands in a way that's, you know, very tailored to your brand. And that is uh, within our reports. So a big part of how we customize it for you. If we go back into the charting functionality, you'll see a few other areas where you can customize these colors. So here we're going to see that in our chart options, I have a custom color palette, although admittedly I am not an artiste and it's not the best, but you'll see that custom color come through. Um, so we can add that just by adding a palette onto the back end, which, you know, again, if you work with uh, our support team to do that, they'll get you all set up. Um, I'm going to add in one more portfolio here so we can see one other color, take it back to another period of time. Also within this now, uh, this was a fairly recent release too. On your annotate tab, you can come in and make some very specific updates that you have the ability to do. Uh, so you can come and grab a color scheme for a specific line. If you really wanna highlight something, um, you can grab that color, change the width. So maybe we're making a real strong point that uh, this sector neutral equity portfolio has been underperforming, for example. All right, Micah, question on options to run hypotheticals on a portfolio starting with a specific dollar amount over a custom time frame. So uh, you may have noted if we go back into the chart options here that we have a growth of 10K format. That is a format that, you know, as the name suggests, it's going to take over that time frame, the beginning of, you know, with beginning with $10,000 and using that custom date range, we can select whatever period of time that we want. Something else that I do see uh, folks doing within the uh, portfolio tool itself, if I go to my sector neutral equity portfolio and make a change by grabbing that little pencil, you're going to see on the right hand side, the initial series level where you can make a custom change here. So I do see folks using that level as potentially representing a dollar value and a starting point. 
Um, so that is another way to use uh, a specific rather than just 10,000 as a hypothetical uh, dollar value. So wrapping up here, um, I just wanted to again, emphasize the fact we've been talking about it a lot here, but the ability to show changes to your portfolios using the dynamic portfolio tool, uh, really, really, really a great upgrade against having a static view when it comes to the performance of your portfolios. Um, and then also within these pages, as you're coming in, you're going to start seeing the new way to organize those portfolios. They become searchable. So keep in mind, you can come in here, search for a client name or the name of the portfolio that you have created. You'll be able to track those down and find them very easily. Okay. Um, if you have additional questions, and I know that there are several that I have not been able to address, please, please reach out to us. You can reach me directly. You can reach out to the team. Um, you know, our customer support team is standing right here in our Chicago office. Uh, you, you know, they're ready to take on and work with you and, and they have been working with you. So uh, please do reach out to us. And, you know, hopefully we can weave some of those questions into our next webinar. For the time being, I'm going to wrap it up with, with that and really, really appreciate everybody's time today. Thank you again for jumping on with me. And I will look forward to having you on the next webinar.